Watching Harmony and Diversity, we're speaking with Judy O'Donnell, who's involved in visiting sacred sites and connecting with Indigenous peoples. Judy, thanks for coming in again. Thank you, Norm. Uh, we were speaking last week about the way in which you came to the point of being fascinated mm -hmm. by sacred sites and mm -hmm. Indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. Over the years, w what have been the main sites that you've been frequently visiting? Uh, okay, first would probably be starting in Australia, Uluru mm -hmm. and Katajuda National Park. Mm -hmm. um, my partner, who wasn't at the time, I'd been there when I was a small girl at school, mm -hmm. um, and then I went on a trip to visit mutual friends with Jeff, mm -hmm. and we ended up together. Mm -hmm. And I had this wise idea that mm -hmm. we were up in um, Kakadu, actually, mm -hmm. which is also another sacred site. Most of the sacred sites in Australia are in national parks, which mm -hmm. is great because they're protected for the people. Yes. Um, but we were up at Kakadu, and I was at this beautiful rock hole with a waterfall, and I was just in heaven, and I said, oh, mm -hmm. I want to come back here. I've got this idea, I reckon, because mm -hmm. he was a ranger, so he mm -hmm. knew all the plants, all the animals, all the birds and the stars mm -hmm. in the sky, and I'm good at gathering people. And I said, I've got this great idea. I reckon we should mm -hmm. bring groups up here, and then we can get to come every year. Yes. And so we've mm -hmm. been doing that for probably 16, 17 years, since 99, I think it was, 98, 99. Mm -hmm. um, so that started that, and then we've been over to... Um, Broom and cross the Nullarbor and we've taken people to visit Uncle Max in Naruma, mm -hmm. an Aboriginal elder down there that does whale dreaming. So just, mm -hmm. um, I suppose the first time that we did go to Uluru, a friend had played a, a radio program of um, Uncle Bob Randall, an Aboriginal yes. elder to me. Mm -hmm. And so I asked our friend that we stayed with at Uluru at the community if she knew his number and I rang him and he said, yeah, love, mm. come over and visit. And, and he mm. said, you're the mm. one. We want this mm. exhibition of mm. Stolen Generation exhibition to come mm. to Melbourne. Mm. And I thought, well, I can't mm. say no to an elder. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I so organised a yeah. big trip for him and his partner to come down to Melbourne. Mm. And, and, mm. Um, and then he said, you need to bring groups up, love. Mm. You need to bring mm. groups. So that was where we got the Aboriginal mm. connection there to actually work with him and we'd go out on the land with his auntie mm. and daughters and stuff and do bush tucker and yes, Bob bush foods and inspiration you know that he passed yeah. away last year oh did he, he did no, yeah I'm which was really that. sad because the no. dalai lama was about to come to uluru for the first time and bob mm. was to greet him and he passed away a couple of months oh, before goodness. which was really sad yes it is sad yeah it's sad because he was a bit of a legend he certainly was in australia so you, you the foundation of of your work has clearly mm -hmm. been australian sites that Which, started, yeah, yep. Yeah. But the same year, mm. I had been, I suppose I'd say, being called to go to mm. Machu Picchu for probably 20 years before that. But something always happened to stop me from going, whether right. it be finances or, or some other reason. Mm. And so this particular year, one of my friends had actually handed me an itinerary and said, Jude, this is where you're going. This is, this is the one. It was a gathering of people from all around the world coming to Peru. And they had all the shamans from Peru and Bolivia and the Amazon coming to this five-day conference. And I went, that's mine. <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, it. I am good. going. Yeah. And that was the same year that Jeff and I did the trip up to Kakadu the first year right. through. So I ended yeah. up going by myself um, mm. because the group cancelled at the last mm. minute and I thought, mm. I'm going. So mm. I went by myself and ended up in sharing a room with a lady who's from Australia, who's a friend of the lady who gave me the itinerary in the first mm. place. I love how the universe works. <laughs> and she just said, I think I could work with you. Let's take groups and when mm. we can come back. And I thought, well, I'm not going to see enough of the country here no. this trip. I definitely want to come back. And so we decided to mm. do Easter Island and... Um, oh, okay. Go to Nazca yep. lines and yeah, just all around. 
different mm. parts of Peru and so we put an itinerary together and then we got back to Australia and I started talking about it and people were saying, here's my business card, I'm coming, I'm coming. And mm. I went, this is easy, yeah. I haven't even advertised. <laughs> and she pulled out and said, oh, I don't know what I was thinking when I was in Peru, I can't do this, but you'll be right by yourself. So I've been doing it on my own ever since, just taking groups each year. To, to Machu Picchu. Machu and, Picchu, and, Lake Titicaca, yeah. sometimes the Nazca Limes, sometimes I'll see an article in um, a magazine or a photo in a book and wow, where's mm. that? And ask mm. my contact over there, where it is, how many days do I need, where do we go from and put that onto the itinerary so I get to see new mm. places as well. Mm. And there are so many sites that are still being uncovered in Peru. It's, yes. it's just yes, amazing. It's, it is amazing. And you know, some people mm. say to me, don't you get bored going to Uluru every year or don't you get bored mm. going to Machu Picchu? And I say, obviously you haven't been because it's mm. just magnificent. You get there and just this mm. breathtaking mm. and it's different every time the light's different the clouds are different and you know you walk around a different trail and and see a completely new spot mm. that you could just wander around and that's just Machu Picchu yes. let alone all the other sites that are incredible okay well when you call it sacred mm -hmm. any of the sites what's yep. it mean um that's good because a lot of people say to me well what makes them sacred mm those places which you know we we think of as you know the pyramids of egypt and machu picchu mm. and uluru etc when really the whole earth is sacred so it's mm. sacred where we're sitting here it's sacred in my backyard etc the earth is sacred but mm. there are sites that have um an energy to them where whether it's i think there's two ways i can look at it um mm -hmm. one is that thousands of people for thousands of years have been going to them so that will create a, a more powerful site yes. and then there's the belief that the ancient people knew where energy points were like we have chakras in our body yes. the earth has chakras and mm. so most of those sacred sites are actually on chakras or energy centers like if you do acupuncture mm. in the chinese thing on our body yeah um there's even a theory that the standing stones are actually acupuncture needles in mother earth mm. so mm. yeah th that's stonehenge and avebury and places like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. could well be yeah, well, certainly That's it's, one it's theory, feasible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's feasible. Mm. How far have those theories been developed? Are you aware of there's, how far uh, they've been? I don't, but there's there's a lot of books and mm. documentaries and a lot of specialists now that are looking into that. Mm -hmm. um, there's also that theory of, of the sound, how, how were the pyramids built? I know the Japanese have tried to build pyramids with all our technology that we've got now and we can't do... No, we can't do it. ...now, but mm. with the ancient technologies that the people had before we, I always think that we went to sleep and now we're waking up again <laughs> as humanity. Yes, yes. In, into a nightmare yeah. perhaps as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, so, so a lot of it seems to be circulating around energy in, mm. in, in, in various yep. ways. Yep. And, and we'll go to a break, but mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you after the break about sure. those energies. Mm -hmm. What of those have you experienced yourself? Okay, sure. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. We're speaking with Judy O'Donnell. She's involved in visiting sacred sites and connecting with Indigenous peoples. Judy, we were talking about energy mm -hmm. and, and the chakra type earth having mm -hmm. energy flows like mm -hmm. our chakras yep. you've been to these sites yep. many many times mm -hmm. have you any experiences which you can describe which are of that sacred energetic connected um, nature yeah and it is it's hard to describe those mm -hmm. feelings without actually experiencing them yourself mm -hmm. um, i call them the aha moments yes. where you just mm -hmm. stop and your breath is just taken away your eyes google and you're just like wow um mm. and i've seen plenty of people in my groups that come over too mm. have either burst into tears um mm. and just yeah it's all too much to mm. take in mm. <laughs> at the time mm. um yeah it's hard to explain mm. so we'll how. say so with Uluru, yeah. which, which is a very significant mm -hmm. site, of course, mm -hmm. for Aborigines, uh, it, it, do you climb it? No way. No way. No. I, I did as a I child you, yes, because yes. I didn't know any mm -hmm. difference. So no. When I first went, 
it was a dirt road. The Stuart Highway was a red, dusty road. We mm. went up in a bus with, I was in, I think, Form 1, so I was mm. 13 or something, and there was no Ulara. Now you have to stay at the resort and you go into the National Park and come out each day. Mm. The community used to be at the base of the rock and there was a pub there. Now it's dry community, so it was very, very different. Mm. And as a school group, it was like, okay, today we're climbing the rock and we... I remember going through some of the sites that I know now you're not even allowed to take photos because they're so sacred. We climbed through them. and mm. But, you know, I spoke to Uncle Bob about that. I've spoken to other people and they said, but you were innocent, you were a little girl. You didn't mm. know any difference. Yeah. Um, but what we've learned now is that to climb the rock, mm. not we, we try and get the, the idea across to our group specifically that... It is a sacred site, and how would you feel if you were a Christian and they started swinging on the chandeliers in your church? Or, <laughs> But also that it's actually a men's initiation area. Okay. So women should mm. never be there, and unless you're an initiated man, you shouldn't be up there either. So mm. they went up there to do ceremony, but we should never be there. So right. we haven't had any... We've had people who said, oh, but I want to climb it when, when we first start the trip, and I go, that's fine, we can't stop you, but we take them to the cultural centre where they learn a lot about the before they do before it before they go and then they go oh actually yeah mm. no and I say plus you see so much more walking around the base mm. is phenomenal it is mm. just it changes every time you come around a corner it's actually almost a triangle shape even mm. though it looks like it's an oval shape when you're actually there it's like a triangle mm. and there's water holes and I've been there several times Bob used to always say to me is your lucky Jude we, mm. we have people come up here 10 times and never see rain and you've seen it nearly every second year that you come up mm. and that changes the place amazingly. It just turns silvery gold and, and just waterfalls coming off all over the place and mm. reflections in puddles that are just pouring at the base and it's just, yeah, amazing. Clearly the Aborigines, the local uh, mm -hmm. Aborigines, have had some sort of input into this. How, how, is, how is this level of awareness of sacredness and and special places that mm -hmm. you shouldn't go and how's mm -hmm. that emerged what's, what's um it has because now the the australian government have handed back the rock mm -hmm. if we want to call it the rock which most mm -hmm. people do um we never call it Airs Rock anymore, even though you still fly into Airs Rock when you book your flight, which I really should be changed. It's Uluru yes. and it should be. It's a little bit, but, yeah. um, And Airs Rock Resort, <laughs> mm. it should still be, but they think they'll miss out on overseas tourists if they change the name. But mm. it was handed back, so now the park management is 50% Anangu, which are the traditional yeah, owners, owners yeah. and 50% national parks. Mm. So that means they have a big decision-making mm. um, power. They can't change anything they would love to stop the climbing yes. but while it's 50 percent the the park side of it government side sees it as too much tourism that people wouldn't come which i think they'd find they would but yeah, yeah. Just that's, change, change it'll, it'll eventually stuff. get there because mm. like i said there used to be places we could climb all over and run all around the place and take photos anywhere mm. they've even made the paths further away from some of the really sacred women's sites so that you can't even take a zoom photo they've put bushes in and you know the path goes right out around so that People mm. always still will go, oh, you know, no one's watching, I'll fly in there mm. and climb through the cave and stuff like that. But they're, they're trying to protect it because there's still ceremonies going on with the Anangu mm. people are still doing their ceremonies the same as they've done for thousands and thousands of years. Of the Australian sites that you're mm -hmm. familiar with, is there one which stands out as being more energetically powerful? Um, well, there's lots, but... There's mm. one that's coming to my mind now, which I've been drawn back like a magnet for mm -hmm. many, many, many years, and that's up near Naruma in New South Wales mm -hmm. with the Ewan people. Yes. Um, and it's, it's Gulliger Mountain. And I remember mm. the first time going up with an Aboriginal elder doing a pilgrimage up and we walked right up to the top of the mountain and we did a little ceremony and got oaked up and then we walked into the site and the rocks, it was huge granite boulders that mm. were just amazing. And I was just like... Whoa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, please don't take photos. You can take mm -hmm. them on the way out. But for now, we're actually in ceremony and we're in walking ceremony. in. Yeah. 
and it was just amazing and they stopped and said this one is the rock that you touch if you can't fall pregnant if you're a woman you touch this rock so we were all like no I'm not <laughs> when I was young I'm not touching that one now then and stay away from yeah. that rock. <laughs> um, but there was literally there was animals there was parts of the body there was just all these natural rocks and mm. the way they explained it back then because I've been there probably with five different elders over mm. the years like I said it's been like a bit of a magnet um, mm. was that you guys build churches at your sacred mm. sites. We actually have natural mm. occurring things that Creator created for us to do our teachings. And mm. so they'll take their children and grandchildren up there to teach them the stories of how to live life respectably and responsibly. Mm. This sounds like a, a bit of a good news story as far as mm. Aborigines are concerned. Mm. Though. There seems mm -hmm. to be a lot of pride and a lot of connection, yep. a lot of power mm -hmm. in it. Yep. Even well, with that site, the last, um, like I said, I've been going with many elders and unfortunately a lot of them have passed away. Mm. There's been um, Uncle Max is the, the one who I saw a photo of him and went, oh, my mm. God, he's beautiful. Just mm. his face, saw his face mm. and said, let's go and see him while he was in Melbourne. Mm. And when I asked him where he's from, That's it right. was Narooma. Yeah. And I went, oh, here yeah. we come again. And but, here we go again. We're out yep. of time. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with Judy O'Donnell. She's involved with visiting sacred sites and connecting with Indigenous peoples. We were talking about the local sacred sites, of mm -hmm. which there's many. Mm -hmm. But you did mention earlier that you, uh, Machu Picchu was a place that you were mm -hmm. fascinated with and yep. go back to many times. Take us through, you arrive at Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. what happens? Yep. Um, well, first you arrive by train or mm. you can walk the Inca Trail where right. you actually come in at a, up at the top of the, at the Sun Gate. Um, mm. But even if you come by, by train, you're at the village at the bottom and you mm. hop on a bus and do this switchback. Yes. track up right. <laughs> and right. I have a fear of heights right. and so right. Peru is pretty scary <laughs> as far as heights um, and then we usually we work with the local shaman over mm. there too so when we get to Machu Picchu they usually do a little um, thing which is magical where we actually hold hands the whole mm. group holds hands and we close our eyes and we just take little side steps side steps side steps until we're right at the edge where Machu Picchu is just straight before you and so mm. when you actually do see it it's not just sort of climbing up and all oh, there's a glimpse of it and we come mm. around the bend we're actually just it's there yeah, in its right. glory just mm. and you're standing at the edge on one of the little steps mm. um, and everyone just goes wow and it doesn't matter how many times I've been back I still love doing that process because mm. I still get the wow factor when right. I open my eyes it's just like mm. it's almost like a coming home and my right. shaman friend over there every time I arrive every year he says welcome home Judy so it's like I've found that most people who are drawn to come to Peru mm -hmm. it is something that's drawing them because they've been there before mm. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So that's that's an energetic thing. That yep. you, you, yep. you suggest. It's literally, yeah. it's calling you. And they say that mm. it was a, a city of light, mm. that it, it was for, um, you know, like a university mm. many, 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 many thousands of years ago mm. until Hiram Bingham discovered it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. In, Good old Hiram. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, the, you mentioned a shaman. So mm -hmm. they're, they're, are they in control of that are they very um, prominent in the whole process very much so mm. the whole of peru still do ceremony regularly for all sorts of different things but they will mm. they will make offerings they'll do a smoking ceremony the same as the aboriginals do the smoking ceremony with gum leaves etc or tea tree or, or she oak or whatever different countries because you know mm. that australia had 500 countries just snuck back from Peru to Australia, but the mm. smoking ceremony is um, practiced in Native American, in South America, with either sage or with eucalyptus here or with some sort of right. sacred plant mm. as an offering and to cleanse our bodies before we enter to these sites. Mm. So they'll always be smoking. Um, in Peru, the shamans use the coca leaf as well, right. um, which they chew mm. the leaves, not only because yeah. it helps with the altitude, but that's also a sacred plant. 
mm. that they believe has a has a total life and they actually get three leaves and hold them and put our breath on them and offer them let the wind blow them to the site to let them know that we're coming and right. offer our our spiritual selves to the site as well mm. so, so is this and that's access to machu picchu is always goes through that filter you don't have no. a whole bunch of no no you'll, you'll see bus yeah. loads pour in that are right. just that click, 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 click. That's if you yes. come on a on a sacred yes. journey. The, I call it yeah. travellers and tourists. There's a big difference. Yeah. There's the you know yeah. the busloads that just pour in and take their photos and pour out and don't stop to feel the energy. They just see it as a site they can tick off their bucket list. Mm. I tend to not attract those sort of people no, with my no. groups anyway. No. Um, but yeah, we can we can stay at sites and find a little quiet spot and sit down and and do ceremony and. Um, not just Machu Picchu, like Peru and Bolivia and Ecuador and Easter Island, like all through there are just filled with amazing mm. structures that are still being uncovered. Yeah, absolutely. Still just... Well, just jumping to Easter Island, mm. we'll go back to Peru yep. in a minute, but how, how does it get handled at, uh, at Easter Island? Because the Indigenous people, there's is, mm -hmm. is no real representatives there. No, there? it's the... the um, Chilean government owns mm. Easter Island now mm. and something that's a bit sad that happened several years ago was that you used to be able to fly from Melbourne to Auckland, Auckland mm. to Easter Island, Easter Island to Santiago in Chile mm. as a stopover and mm. you could stop three or four nights. Mm. Now you can't do that. You've got to fly over to Santiago, fly back to Easter Island, then fly back to Santiago before you can go before on to Peru. On. Right. So that's mm. probably so going to make a huge difference. A to yes. tourism there for them which is mm. the only money that they've got coming in mm. but as far as the the site i remember the first time flying in there mm. and you're coming down to land it's this tiny once again little triangle island mm. with a volcano on each corner mm. and all the moi the big stone yes. heads that we we know easter island as mm. either side of the the plane you're looking out at these things going wow and then you hit the ground and come to the other end of the island do a taxi back to mm. the little tin shed for the for the airport mm. terminal but mm. it's got some amazing places too there was another place there that the lady that i ended up meeting the first time there um used to be thor heyerdahl's guide when he first went to easter island and i didn't know oh, that i just yeah. happened to luck right. out and stay at her oh, place yeah, and she said oh you can go into town and get a tourist thing or oh, you can come in my husband's combi and we'll take you to the sites and i have special place for you judy and i went okay let's go mm. and it was this huge round boulder like a marble mm. and it had four in the four directions smaller and she said you must take your shoes off and go in barefoot and four people went in at a time and then just sat on a little rock and put our hands on the on the the big boulder in the middle and she said right. this is the umbilical cord of the earth and okay. it was pumping i don't necessarily feel energy mm. but it was boom, boom, it was on my hands i was like right. wow yes. this place is amazing yes well, that, that so, sounds like that might be getting close to a, a sort of a peak experience, isn't it? It was that pretty feeling big. There, you know, yeah. the, at the, at yeah. the energy, yes. Yep. And, and how do they connect that back to the Moi? Is there any connection between that? Or that they, particular no, place, no. 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 Um, they just say that that is the umbilical of the earth mm. and it definitely was pumping like a... Mm. Definitely. Well, talking about being the umbilical of the earth, mm -hmm. this program is not the umbilical of the earth, but... <laughs> But it's been great speaking with you, mm -hmm. and we're we're coming to the end of time. Yep. Okay. And uh, you know the the examination of the sacred sites has been mm -hmm. fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Judy. Thank you. You've been watching Harmony and Diversity, and we'll be back next week. Bye for now. Bahá'u'lláh. Shanti Om